Scientists used a classification system to organize and categorize the billions of species that lived on Earth. The phylogenetic tree of life contains three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota. Each domain contains kingdoms, archaebacteria, eubacteria, fungi, plantea, animalia, and protista. Today, we will be discussing the characteristics of the nine major phyla and kingdom animalia. Each phylum contains different characteristics. The first phylum is periphera. Periphera are what we know as sponges. Their habitat is generally marine or salt water. These sponges have a porous body as well as their perizoans and they don't have any tissues. They are basically groups of cells that are connected together and filled with holes throughout their bodies. These pores or holes allow water to pass through. Digestion occurs when food particles are caught as they pass through the holes and canals inside the sponge. Due to their irregular shape, they are asymmetrical. Adult sponges are sessile feeders, which means that they are attached to rocks or shells in the ocean as they feed. As sponges have no tissues, there isn't any internal circulation, germ layers, or segmentation. Periphera are also deuterosomes, meaning their anus is formed before their mouth. Reproduction in periphera is either by means of sexual or asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is caused by buds of periphera that break off and become their own organism. Since periphera comprises of a variety of specialized cells, both leftover parts can survive. Sexual reproduction consists of male gametes being released into the water and taken in by neighboring cells. The collar cells near the outside of the organism can take the gametes to the egg where fertilization occurs. And the egg is then released into the water so it becomes sessile and grows into a new organism. Examples of periphera include ascanoids, psychonoids, and leuconoids. Okay. The second phylum is Snedarian. Snedarians include jellyfish, sea anemones, and coral. Their habitat is marine. Their body wall is made up of two or three germ cell layers called the ectoderm and endoderm. The ectoderm is the outside layer, while the endoderm is the inside layer. They have radial symmetry. The digestive system is incomplete, meaning that there is only one opening to the digestive cavity and that it serves as both a mouth and an anus. They also have tentacles which contain stinging cells and are used for protection in capturing food. A network of nerves allows motility of tentacles in their body. Snedarians have two body forms, medusas and polyps. However, polyps are sessile. Reproduction in medusas occurs during sexual, sexual formation of gametes and reproduction in polyps is through asexual budding. Snedarians have open internal circulations, no segmentation, and are neither protostome or deuterostome because the mouth serves as the anus. The third phylum is Platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes contain flatworms and tapeworms which are mostly parasitic. Their habitat is freshwater, saltwater, and terrestrial. Flatworms have three distinct germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Each layer supports various organs and systems in this animal. In the non-parasitic flatworms, the digestive system is incomplete which means it only has one opening. Parasitic tapeworms, however, don't need a digestive system as they absorb the nutrients directly from the host who has already digested them. Flatworms also have bilateral symmetry and have a definite head slash tail region. The tapeworms have a pair of eye spots which detect light at the front end of its body. For protection, both, tape, both the tapeworm and flatworm have a thick cuticle which protects worms from being digested by its host enzymes. Movement is controlled by either long muscles or by cilia. Reproduction can be sexual or asexual, however, many have developed ways to avoid self-fertilization. The fourth phylum is nematoda. Nematoda are primarily roundworms. Their habitat is freshwater, saltwater, and terrestrial. They have three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. They have a mouth, however, waste, excretion, and breathing is done through the body wall. Nematoda have no circulatory system and are a very basic nervous system that allows muscle movement in the form of thrashing for motility. They have a very small pseudocoelomate or fake cavity, which is usually filled with intestines or testes. Reproduction is sexual, occurs when the males use copulatory spines to open the female's reproduction tract and inject sperm. There is no segmentation and two germ layers 
Examples include elephantiasis, pinworms, and hookworms. The fifth phylum is mollusca. The, their habitat is marine, freshwater, and terrestrial. Mollusca have soft, unsegmented bodies and usually move with a strong muscular foot on its ventral side. They are well known for their tongue-like organ called the radula, which has many rows of teeth and is used to scrape food from the surface of plants and rocks. The mantle of the mollusks is the, like a gland and it, as it secretes and hardens to form the shells of mollusks. The skin er, surrounds the organs and helps to protect them. They have bilateral symmetry. They have an open circulatory system with their cavity mainly limited to the area around their heart. They are protostomes with both a mouth and an anus and have a complex digestive system. Reproduction is sexual. Examples include clams, oysters. The sixth phylum is Annelida. Their habitat is marine, freshwater, and terrestrial. This phylum consists of earthworms, leeches, and sandworms. These organisms have a similar body plan to that of a roundworm. However, the body is segmented both internally and externally, which allows a quicker response of movement. Segmented worms have a complete digestive system, a closed circulatory system, and a large and well-developed coelom. Both their anterior and posterior ends are symmetric, as well as their dorsal and ventral sides. They have vascularized skin, which allows gases to pass through their skin and help them to breathe. Contrary to popular belief, some forms of annelids have very well-developed eyes. The seventh phylum is Arthropoda. They can be found in all environments as they are the most diverse phylum. These organisms have a segmented body which provide excellent movement for walking, swimming, grabbing, fighting, etc. Each of their body segments has a pair of segmented appendages. They have bilateral symmetry. The outside skeleton is made of chitin which protects the soft body and prevents water loss, allowing them to live successfully on land. Most of their body cavities are loosely filled with tissue, sinuses, and blood. The circulatory system is open and contains a heart, arteries, and the open spaces of the body cavity. They are proto protosomes and have both a mouth and an anus. Respiration is conducted by means of gills, trachea, or book lungs. Fertilization is sexual and internal. Three examples of organisms in this phyla are insects, spiders, and crustaceans. The eighth phylum is Echinodermata. Their habitat is marine, as all of these organisms live mainly on the ocean floor. Echinoderms have an internal skeleton composed of <coughs> calcium carbonate and a spiny outside surface or skin. These structures give both support and protection to the organism. Echinoderms are well known for their vascular system, which is made up of water-filled tubes throughout their body. By moving water in and out of these tubes, echinoderms can move using jets of water or using their tube feet as suction cups. They have a complete digestive system and generally have radial symmetry. The last phylum I will cover is chordata. Their habitat is marine, freshwater, and terrestrial. They generally have bilateral symmetry. Chordates are all animals with a dorsal hollow nerve tube known as a notochord and phalangeal gill slits. In vertebrates, cartilage or bone replaces the notochord to form a supporting backbone. They are all extremely motile with a variety of different ways of movement. They are protosomes, which again means their mouth forms first, though they have an intricate digestive system, complete with a mouth and anus. They also reproduce sexually, though the type of sexual reproduction varies depending on their classes. These organisms are generally the most complex of the animal kingdom with three germ layers and internal organs suspended in a well-developed coelom, though this also differs by class. And that's it for this presentation. Please join us next time from UAH Biology. Are you ready kids? Aye aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye.